Hi and welcome back to this week's edition of Hawk Talk. I'm Ellie Hanser. And I'm Coulter Hickok. And we have a first timer on Hawk Talk actually. Um, can you go ahead and introduce yourself, who you are, where you're from, and what you do here at DSU? Um, my name is Jaden Hawley. Uh, I'm a sophomore. I do track and field and esports on the side. I'm from Glendive, Montana. That's nice. awesome. So, did going to Glendive kind of have like any influence on you? I know we got a guy coming here. His name is Nelson Crucifoli. I'm pretty sure you know him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he called it uh, Glendive State University. What do you think about uh, calling DSU that? Uh, I, I mean, I agree with him, but c because there's a lot of kids from Glendive that do come to Dickinson, uh, yeah, it's, there's a lot of Glendive kids here. There are. There are. It, it's pretty. It's a pretty accurate statement. We liked that when we were, yeah. when we saw that interview. It was really <laughs> funny. So I mean, you're just a sophomore, but you've been having some really great meets in track. Have you learned anything from like the older guys, like such guys like Jeff Fisher, Blade Miller? Like, what have you learned from those guys? Um, a lot of like technical things. I'm not. A, I'm not very good at weight yet. Uh, Jeff really helped me with weight throw last year, and with like shot put, played a really big influence in that as well. But yeah. Is there any we, other big names we're missing there? I'm trying to think. Um, not. I don't. Know. Maybe Peyton Otterdahl from NDSU. Yeah, he's the kind of the dude I look up to. He's. I thought he was going to like, uh, participate this next weekend, but he participated last week, so he won't be there. Oh, and is that a transfer? No, he's oh. a big thrower from NDSU. Like, oh. he's, he's big time. <laughs> he's big oh, time. okay. He's a professional thrower. Oh, I see. Yeah. I thought it was like someone that came here. No. Definitely not. But, <laughs> but here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know all the big That's okay. throwing names. That's all good. You know? Um, you know, just kind of switching gears a little bit, what did you think of the Super Bowl this weekend? Uh, it was kind of crazy. I didn't think Patrick Mahomes was going to do it, but if he gets a little bit of momentum, I feel like he can do anything. But I think a bigger question is, what do you think of the halftime show? <laughs> uh, I've had a crush on Shakira for a <laughs> long time, so yeah. I liked it a lot. <laughs> they, they crushed it, I thought. I agree that they crushed it super hard. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was probably one of the best ones I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, on Twitter they said they restored the faith in the Super Bowl halftime yeah, show. Yeah, right. I thought the last best one was like Beyonce, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Beyonce kind of crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I agree that she crushed it, but that was like Super Bowl 50. You gotta gotta move on to bigger, better things. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm not really a big football person, so. That's okay. So kind of moving things back <laughs> into a little more track and field questions. Uh, so you're an indoor right now. Uh, what is the difference between basically indoor track and outdoor track? Um, indoor is obviously taking place <laughs> inside. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. The, it's a lot of like you're a lot you're close to people. Like, to, you're closer to people. Like say in outdoor, you're more spread out and you have to walk certain place to get certain places. Um, just there's a lot more people watching you because like the last two meets, throwing events like shot put, finals, and that kind of stuff has been like way late and kind of the reason. Like we could take so long to get home, but I mean everything keeps like it's like speedy like during outdoor I guess you could say, and I get a lot more tan in yeah. outdoor season <laughs> rather than indoor. Yeah, hope the weather works with you a little bit. Yeah. Yes, and so I know that there are different events that you can't do indoors, but what events do you do right now? I do shot put and weight throw. So yeah, it's nothing crazy. There's only two indoor throwing events. Now, for like people those like who don't know, is that the weight throw kind of like the hammer throw? Yep. Yeah, the weight throw is exactly like the hammer throw, obviously, but it's just a lot heavier. The weight is, I, I'm not quite sure how heavy it is, but... Isn't it 35 pounds? Yeah, I think it's oh, what wow. it is. Yeah, and it's really hard to throw because you have to keep your momentum going. Right. And if you don't have that, it's just kind of, you're done from the beginning, I guess you could say. And so, then, so you spin in circles with that one, yeah, right? Yeah, you go around your head and oh. then just... Like spin around really oh, fast, wow. yeah. I get dizzy. Yeah, same. <laughs> How do you not get dizzy? Uh, I don't not get dizzy, oh. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of throw it and hope you don't get dizzy while you're throwing, but. Yeah. yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad that we could figure that out a little bit more. Yes. Yeah. I honestly never really knew that you there was only two events. Yeah. Throwing events for indoor track, so that. Kind of fun yeah, to know. I guess it's a little hard to throw a javelin indoors. Yeah, I mean, it might be a little bit dangerous too, but dangerous, yeah. it'd be hard to find like one that's long, like you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That way. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, switching back again. Yeah. Um. What What have you been working on this season individually? Uh, like 
lifting or like yeah lifting what yeah. kind of throws technique anything um a lot of youtube videos uh i record myself when i throw so i can go back and watch it you know make sure i critique myself a lot of weightlifting, obviously and then proper like eating and stuff like that i guess you'd say yeah what um do you i mean i mean i know that throwing is individual yeah, right yeah but it's also a team sport team. so do you look at it more as an individual sport or a team sport um i think of it as a team sport but like when I when we want to win, you have to do good individually. So I have that mindset going into the into the ring to compete. But yeah, that's my mindset on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it, it is hard too. I mean, we were talking about this. Mm -hmm. I actually threw for one year in track, really? so I know a little bit. But um, I think in outdoor, especially, it's pretty easy to kind of you know mm -hmm. pull away with just yeah. like the throwers. Yeah. Um, do you find it hard to kind of like keep connections and make connections with those field events? Um, like. No, not really. I mean, we're all kind of just, we just mob from one spot to another. Yeah. It's a little snack and field posse, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never heard that before. Yeah, we're throwers. We just <laughs> eat, lift, and throw. I mean, that's how Jade and I met each other. I mean, we've known each other since I was a sophomore and he was a freshman throwing, and he'd always beat me, so I'm super happy we can kind of come full circle on this and get you on for the interview. Yeah. And I know from throwing with you that you kind of had some rituals that you would do beforehand like uh what's your favorite like go-to song if you had like listen to music what is it uh i listen to a lot of joiner lucas or the baby um that's a the big one uh that nothing really just running kind of get my mind right just warming up my body like to the max i guess you could say <laughs> oh, i like that and yeah. how long like before you uh, go and throw so like in it just depends. So like this last weekend, I was in the second flight. There's normally like one to two flights of throwers, and I get I start getting warmed up like on the third throw of the first flight, kind of thing. So okay. yeah. And mm. then how far are usually finals after that? Um, so after your flight, is that what you call yep, it? Okay. Yep. So it'll go first flight, and there's normally ten, then second flight, and then like they take the bet the top ten best throws out of those two flights, and then we move it to the finals, which is like. Immediately, immediately after oh, okay. the, the finals. Or the, yeah. So, <laughs> kind of as like uh, individual and uh, more of the thrower's team, what have you guys been person or not personally, but like what have you guys been working on? Um, like, I guess we, we have good chemistry. We're like, we're gonna bonding with each other. We're not like so like one-sided against all things, I guess. We mm -hmm. all share common interests. Uh, we all like, live together obviously practice together uh, McCready like cooked breakfast for all of us a while ago and it's pretty good like just team chemistry is a big one and throwing chemistry I guess yeah yeah I could definitely see that and I know McCready McCready has been having a really good year as well I mean yep. she's just a sophomore this year yep. but it's been fun um, to kind of see her grow yeah. who else have you kind of been seeing um, you know continue to do well on like throughout the whole team not just the throwers um there, there's a lot of people. Uh, Caleb Petros, like during like the off like uh, off season, but before our track started, we would kind of get lifting together, and he kind of we exchanged like, goals we want to do and stuff like that. He qualified for nationals last year, and he's trying to help me get to that this year. So, I mean, we've all come pretty far. I, I think there's a lot of PRs this year. Then, right. So, it's a pretty good thing to have. And do you think that it's going to continue to grow into outdoor season? Yeah, I think we have a really good. We have really good momentum coming into outdoor. Checking like the T Tfers website every once in a while, just seeing where all, where our other competition is at, stuff like that helps us kind of know where we need to be. Yeah. So I know you have a lot of track years behind you, and I hope you have plenty more track years ahead of you. What's your favorite memory from anything that's happened over your career? Um, prob probably my senior year. I mean, I lost in the state like state meet at Shoplet, but I was there. yeah I was going I was first going into the finals and the kid that had beat me he throws it uh, University of Minnesota right now he can, he's like one of those kids he, he like just gets hyped by himself like he just can like yell at himself and I mean even though I lost it was kind of crazy because I was like one of the create like it was awesome seeing how far the, uh, we threw together like combined I guess the top two state meet it was just back and forth every time mm -hmm. it was on I think it was on like uh, 
the, I don't know his name, but he was on Twitter. He was on Twitter everywhere. It was crazy, but that, or probably qualifying for the first time in shot put was a big one for me. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we're, ex we're excited to see some more real big qualifiers yeah. this year, right? Yeah. I'm, right? I'm, I'm trying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you've kind of already talked about it. You've got a great career here. You're hopefully going to have many more years here. So, with all of that, what does DSU mean to you? Um, DSU means, I mean, there's, we're like a family. I mean, it's just, we're so close and tight. I mean, everybody knows everybody unless you, like, try not to know everybody kind of thing. <laughs> um, it's just, it's home, I guess. Kind of, it's just, I don't know, we always, I always have friends here. There's things to do and, yeah, a lot of nice people, stuff like that. Yeah, we love to hear it. That's our that's our favorite question really? to ask. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever no. watched Hawk Talk. Yeah. It's kind of a it's a staple, I would say. Yeah, you know? I mean, I agree that it's completely a big, huge family. Mm -hmm. Once a Blue Hawk, always a Blue Hawk. Yep. Yeah, and who'd have thought? Like you know, three Eastern Air yeah. Eastern Airs yeah, have exactly. been sitting here yeah. all together. Yeah. yeah, super cool. Super cool. Well, Jaden, <laughs> we want to thank you for coming on the show because I mean, it is your first time after all. So we got you this nice T-shirt. It says I flew on Hawk Talk. All right. Yeah, sponsored by Movable Ministries, so we got to thank Tyler and all the crew over there for that. So, yeah, there well, you we go. wanted to thank you again for yeah. coming on. It was really fun to get to yeah. hear about you, and you know, you are one of the younger athletes we've had on so far. Yeah. So it was nice to hear a different yeah. perspective. But best of luck to you. We we know that you're going to have a great a great season indoor and outdoor. But yeah. thank you very much, buddy. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. We'll be back right after this. Hey guys, it's Tyler with Immovable Ministries here, and I'm so excited to be able to be the sponsor for this year's Hawk Talk. If you'd like to find out more about Immovable Ministries, you can visit our website at immovableministries.com. And we're back with actually another new um, flyer on Hawk Talk, which is exciting. Crazy. Um, can you go ahead and introduce yourself, where you're from, and what you do at DSU? So my name is Shaylee Sheridan. I am from Faith, South Dakota originally. I was at Williston State College for two years. I am a junior this year, and I am on the women's basketball team. Nice. Sweet. Yeah, we love to have you here. Um, so did you come this fall, right? Is that when you transferred yeah. in? Yep. And then Willison is just a two-year, or did you transfer? No, nope, it's just it's just a two-year. Yeah, so okay. I graduated in the spring. Oh, nice. And that's just like the associates one, right? Yeah. Nice. I never know how JUCOs work, so it's always good to know. I don't think um, they're exactly a JUCO. Yep. Isn't? Yep, it is. Are they? Yep. Right? Really? Yeah. Did I know that? Yeah, Willison, not so much now, but used to be like a very prominent JUCO. So. Gotcha. Oh, that makes sense. Gotcha. Um, what was that recruitment process like coming from a JUCO to Dickinson? So, <laughs> coming here, there actually was no recruitment process. I, oh. I had decided going into my sophomore year that I was just <clears throat> going to be done playing basketball. I had had a couple knee surgeries, another one before my sophomore year. Um, so I was just, I told my coach at the beginning of the year, I don't want to hear anything, I don't want to, don't tell anybody, whatever. So I, my roommate decided to come cheerlead here. So we just kind of up and moved to Dickinson and then I was going to school here. It was like September, I guess. And I used to play against the new assistant coach, Haley Freilich. Mm -hmm. I played against her in high school and she saw me at the rec one day and she was like, how come you're not playing basketball? And um, so she asked me if I wanted to come check it out. So I came to a practice, and here I am. Here you are. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. That's I didn't awesome. realize that. Yep. That is, that is awesome. Yep. I, that makes me so happy because. <laughs> That's a cool story. <laughs> yeah, and I know that the, the basketball coaches are so, like, amazing, and they've been recruiting well, so yep. they must have been mad that they even, like, let you, you know, kind of slip by. <laughs> well, yeah, because um, my coach at Williston was actually, like, really good friends with the coaches that were previously here. Oh, right. So, um they had tried to talk to me a little bit, and my roommate and I both, actually, and we were both just like, no, it's okay. And So yeah, I just kind of ended up coming full circle eventually. 
That's awesome. So I know this is your second semester here, but how is the DSU lifestyle treating you so far? It's good. Um, it's definitely different from JUCO. Um, the just getting off campus and like having more people, I guess. The football team, we didn't have football at Boston. <laughs> um, but I like it. It's pretty low key at the same time. Yeah. So. Yeah. What's your favorite part of the football games? All of it, honestly. Yeah. I'm like a really, I'm a really big football person, mm -hmm. really. So um, my. I, I do know that we took a football coaching class <laughs> yeah, together. I was, oh, you yeah, guys? I was in the football coaching <laughs> class. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a, all of it, and it was it was hard because I was like a, I managed and did practically an assistant coach at my <laughs> high school, um, and so then going to Wilson, not having football was weird. So it was really nice to finally get to go to some football games again. It's awesome. So kind of a bit of a fun question for you. Okay. I mean, we ask these all the time, but like, uh, if you were to pick any animal as like your spirit animal, like, what are you gonna pick? Coach Vaughn actually asked us this oh, at really? the beginning of the season, <laughs> and I, I don't even remember what she said for me. It was an eagle. That was that was the one that she said for me. All right. I don't. Please don't ask me to explain that because I really don't know. <laughs> it was just I mean, you're always like jumping high to get rebounds. Like no. <laughs> No, not even that. Um, about once a game, maybe, I guess. Okay. <laughs> not a big rebounder, but <laughs> I'll go with that, though. Yeah. All right, all right. What about you, Ellie? Um, you know, I was always called bear in high school, so I just, like, I've kind of stuck with that. I think that mine would be a bear, but, like, a nice one, so a black bear. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, always nice, and they're always just kind of hanging out, you know, getting buried. So if I yeah. ask you what kind of bear is best? Polar bear. False. Black bear. Oh, yeah. Do you not know what I'm talking about? No. The Office. Oh. Ellie. Like, <laughs> Dwight, you mean? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't pick that up right away. Did you know what he was talking about? Do you watch I Office? No. I, I, I haven't. I'm going to get crucified for that, but. That's okay. No. I mean, it's an all right show. But I think my animal would, uh, I think my animal would be uh, like an elephant, you know? They're, they're big and dope. <laughs> Do you have the memory of an elephant? Uh, I probably have got it knocked out of my uh, head too many times from <laughs> playing football, so probably not. Well, I mean, they are kind, though, and, like, you're they, nice yeah. sometimes. Um, <laughs> anyway, coming back into basketball, um, you know, last weekend did mark the second half of, or the beginning of the second half of yep. conference play. Um, what did you think of the first half of conference? How do you think you guys did? Yeah. Um, uh, I think you? we definitely had, like, Ryan, there were some you? highs and lows in the first section of conference we like kind of showed ourselves what we could do but we also kind of showed ourselves what we shouldn't do as well um, so there's definitely some good things things to learn from um, we kind of put ourselves right I think we were like about 500 at the end almost at the end we'd won some tough games and then um, I think coming back through the schedule again will be good especially some of the tough losses we had on the road, we seem to play a lot better at home, so mm -hmm. getting to play those games at home will be good. Yeah, um, getting some big crowds there too is always nice, right? Yeah. But what was it kind of like playing? Um, so you guys played two weekends ago, you guys had the Mayville um, mm -hmm. presentation, right? Those yes. are the two grouped together. And then last weekend you went right away, big turnaround, Mayville yeah. presentation. And I know that those games must have been so tough for you guys. So what was last weekend like? Last weekend was tough. It was, um, Ironically, that was like the shortest trip we had, so it wasn't like we were on the bus for 11 hours or whatever, but mm -hmm. um, Mayville obviously is always going to be a tough game. The number one in the conference, they haven't lost in the conference, uh, especially playing them at home was tough. And then the turnaround to presentation is, was hard because like with um, everything with coach coming from presentation, like that was, that's a big one for us. Like we really wanted to get that one. Um, but also coming off the loss from Mayville was, I think, that just kind of sucker punched us on Saturday a little. So those were pretty, that was a tough weekend yeah. for sure. What did you learn from that weekend? Um, I would say just like our energy level and just bringing it every day. I think after Mayville, it was just like we kind of hung on to that loss a little too long and let it stick around. Um, just being able to bounce back. It's tough on back-to-backs. Um, in conference, everything's right away. you got to turn around. So you can scout all week for one team, but then you got to turn around and just play again on Saturday. So 
Um, just being able to turn around and bring energy all weekend is probably the biggest thing. Yeah, and that, I mean, it is. Mayville, we, we were at the Mayville game. We got to see the back half of that, and they are, they are tough, but I thought you guys played them so well, and I'm sure you did this last weekend, but... Um, you know, really getting to see you guys like battle in those games was really fun to watch. And I'm a big fan. You're a big fan. <laughs> big Thank fan you. of the battles. <laughs> big fan of the battles. That's, um, that's what I'm all about. <laughs> so then, looking forward to this weekend, who do you play? Um, so we have Waldorf on Friday, and then Viterbo Saturday, senior night. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So those are two really big, exciting games. Yeah, last home games. So. Yeah. So there, everyone, come out. Is there anything you guys are working on in practice to get ready for these two games? Um. But Turbo uh, has a pretty good press. They have, they have, their defense is like ranked in the country pretty well on three-point percentage, everything. So just kind of getting after each other. So to get ourselves ready for that kind of pressure in the game on Saturday for sure and working on their press a lot more. Uh, Waldorf doesn't really press as much. So uh, we've been working on our press break and uh, we didn't handle their press very well when we went to Viterbo. So mm -hmm. trying to get over that and then just kind of focusing on our scout a little bit, just kind of trusting in what we can do rather than worrying too much about everything else. Right. Exactly. I think that's, that, I think that's a pretty good plan to bring in. I'm, we're really excited to come. Um, yes. Yeah, we actually have Blue Hawk game day yeah. coming, coming live at you <laughs> on, um, on Friday before the game. So, yes. Or Saturday, I mean, sorry. Mm -hmm. Saturday yes. before the game. Yep. So that'll be fun. We'll be there cheering you on, and yep. I'm sure that we'll get a nice big crowd for senior night, too. I hope so. Yeah. It should be a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. Switching gears a little bit, we did talk about this a little bit with President Easton last weekend, but or last week, weekend. Um, but, you know, the last two weeks, the whole world of basketball has been grieving the loss of Kobe Bryant. What kind of an impact has his legacy had on you? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> personally, like growing up, I was always um, more of a, like watching more point guards than anything. So mm -hmm. I wasn't necessarily a super huge Kobe fan most of my life, just because Kobe's kind of known for not passing the ball <laughs> um, but I mean you can't ignore like the legacy his legacy his impact on basketball in general like I mean whether you like Kobe or not if you shoot something into a trash can you say Kobe like right <laughs> you know and um, his just his work at work ethic and everything that he brought to the game mindset wise um, when you think of like real competitors Kobe is like a a, a big one that comes to mind. So I think that probably had more of an impact on me, his work ethic, his drive. Um, so that was that was crazy. That was really tough. We talked about it when it happened that like guys like that don't die. Like mm -hmm. everybody, Bill Russell, all those guys are still how old and crippled and walking around. So that was crazy. Yeah, and especially when someone's in that good of health too. So it's, yep. it's definitely yeah. hard. So I know that you've played basketball for quite some time. Is there any memory that you have from like your earliest form of like playing basketball? So like when I was really young? Yeah, mm -hmm. anything that you can possibly remember. Um, I think that's tough. When I was in the second grade, I was playing on a team that was like from a little country school. So it was like, I was the only one from town and we played another one of the country schools and our team ended up winning two to four and I had, <laughs> I had two points and then the other two points that ended up winning us the game, the, other, the girl from the other team made it. <laughs> and like her, te <laughs> her teammate was trying to like block her the whole time because uh -huh. she wasn't listening. Oh, so no. That's probably the, the one thing that pops out of my mind. You <laughs> it was what? an offensive that's battle the whole game. That was a great memory. <laughs> yes. Yeah, those are always the best. Um, we were we were just kind of thinking about it. I mean, this weekend is senior night. I know that you are a junior, but what have those seniors taught you this last season? Um, we have, I mean, we only have the two seniors. Mm -hmm. um, Ashley has been here. This is her second year. She's another JUCO transfer. Um, this is Sid's first year. But I think, like, Ashley has kind of, like, honestly, I think taught me how to, like, remember how to have fun playing basketball. Like, um, She's like a really hard worker, but we also just have fun. Like when, when things are starting to click and stuff, just laughing and having a good time. Um, and Sid just makes you better. Like I, that's the one thing going against Sid in practice every day, has, ever since I got here has been, has made me better. So um, I think definitely having fun has been one big thing. And then just like competing every day is something that I learned from Sid too. It's awesome. 
Yeah, and we're excited. We're excited to be able to watch, you know, that last game that they're going to have at uh, Scotch Gymnasium. I know it's a special night for all of us, all of us old retired people out there. But <laughs> yeah. um, we, we're hoping that you guys go and get that win for those two. And yeah. I know Ashley, I bring her up all the time, but I played against her in, um, in high school, mm -hmm. and she just has always been one of the best in my eyes, like one of the best female athletes that, you know, I've ever played against. Yeah. So it's been been really fun to yeah. see her and we're excited we're excited to have a good send-off with her she's a competitor for sure yeah yeah exactly so I know this is the staple question of Hawk Talk I know you've been looking forward to it it's the biggest question of your life probably right now <laughs> <laughs> so what does DSU mean to you um, I would say because of the way that I started playing basketball and the way that I ended up here I think DSU for me is just like kind of like a not really a fresh start, but just like a new start. Like I am starting from like a clean slate The co when it comes to the coaching staff, the team and everything, and just starting over. I mean, when you go to, you go to a JUCO and you get comfortable there, like neither of you went to JUCO, but <laughs> it, going to JUCO, like you go for two years and typically it's small and you get comfortable there. And so then coming, transferring in as a junior is kind of weird. So just kind of starting over, giving a fresh start, um, having to learn how to meet everybody all over again. Um, you're essentially a freshman as two years into it. So mm -hmm. I think just a new start probably. Good. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think I think that's how a lot of people feel. I know one of my teammates, Kadara Marshall, she was a transfer in and she kind of had the same she kind of had the same feelings but it was all it was all a great transition. Mm -hmm. And so it's really good to hear, especially since, you know, you're new here. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well we got a gift for you. Like we were talking about before, you and Dakota Dosh are the only ones on the basketball team that have I flew on Hawk Talk shirts. Yes, we're special. And you were saying that you need more Blue Hawk stuff. I do. So I do. Thank you so much. We want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank yeah. you for having me. Best of me. luck for the rest of the season and this weekend. But, yeah, thank you Thanks, again. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Um, we'll be back for a recap right after this. All right, welcome back for the recap. So, Ellie, what happened this weekend? Um, I mean, as we said, we knew that women's basketball was on the road, so mm -hmm. obviously that means men's basketball is on the road. Um, they went one on one with one. <laughs> they went one and one yeah. over the weekend. Um, they did. They lost to Mayville, mm -hmm. which, which is hard because, like we said earlier, um, it is the battle. Like you know, yeah, it's a battle. Yeah, it's it is. It's going to be a battle, but we think that that's kind of the battle of the top spot mm -hmm. in our conference. So. Um, at this point, we beat Mayville by 10, they beat us by 10, so we're pretty even, so it's going to be exciting to kind of see how that comes out into the playoffs and conference tournament. Um, yeah, it was really cool to get Shaylee on here, get her side and everything. Yeah, yeah, and the men are also now 5-4 and four in conference, which, which is, is awesome. yep, the first time that they've been in um, over, you know, 500 or negative this season, mm -hmm. so that's really exciting to see, and it's, they're finally, I feel like they're starting to peak kind of at the end of the season, which is exactly what we need right. um and on friday they kicked the snot out of mayville yeah it was crazy presentation was it presentation yeah they they beat presentation on That's saturday right. yep and then they lost to mayville on friday so they did they came back after a really tough loss um and it's almost like that maybe they took out their anger because they did they beat them it was like 104 to 70. Mm -hmm. so that is a that is a pretty big marginal win i'd say so yeah. What about women's basketball? What are we looking forward to? I'm looking forward to doing a little Blue Hawk game day. Yeah, that's going to be really fun. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, and maybe we'll get the uh, we'll get the audio a little bit better. I mean, that was our first time in Scott, so we're going to get there. Yeah. And I think it's going to be really fun to kind of get to experience that. And then not just us, but hopefully Susanna will be there and Seth will be there. Yep. So it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, and then um, it's also, I forgot to talk about this, but... Uh, men's and women's senior night on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. um, they are playing Viterbo on that night. And so, yeah, that'll be fun to watch. And then they have Waldorf on Friday night. Mm -hmm. Should be a lot of fun. Then wrestling, they participated in the Sioux City. Yeah. The Sioux City invite. 
Uh, we are kind of looking for results on that, uh, not 100%, but you can find it on the DSU Blue Hawk site. But they had their duel against Jamestown, and they beat Jamestown in their duel. Yeah, by like quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting to see, and I think that the wrestling team is going to have such a good year. And it was kind of nice to have Gresh on, but I'm excited to have a few others on too to talk about, you know, kind of their journey throughout right. it. And then their next duel will be at Minot. Right. This weekend? Yes. Yeah, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Who else do we have to talk about? Uh, track. Oh, yes, track. Why Why does track always try to slip my mind, Coulter? It just is like, <laughs> you need to keep me on my, you need to keep me on my. We just had Jaden on, too. Do yeah, you, I know. Do you remember that? Yeah, I All do right. remember that. It was it was a little bit ago, but. Yes, so track. They participated last week at uh, Spearfish. And right. I, think every, I think everybody did really good. Jaden, he placed sixth overall, which is mm -hmm. awesome. And this week they're going to be heading to Fargo on Friday and Saturday. Right. And then the Rosinskis obviously had a really good weekend. Did I say that right? We're gonna yeah. Get, we got to get them on. Yeah. Cleet, Cleet and Renzi, um, both the siblings, they had a really good weekend, competed mm -hmm. well. Um, I think they both took home first. Yep. McCready Miller, the girl thrower, uh, she's doing really good. Hopefully we can get her on sometime as well. Yeah. And we got to get a lot of people on for track. Yeah. But McCready, it's, it's really exciting to see her just because, you know, she... She started off, um, and she wasn't, I mean, she was, like, great, but, like, not quite to her full potential. And mm -hmm. I think that she's finally here at DSU. She's reaching her full potential. And so mm -hmm. I think I'm excited to see kind of some of the big things that. Right. Her and Audrey Skidmore, the freshman thrower as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the coaches are doing a great job with them. And who are the track coaches? Uh, we have throwing. Coach Whitcup or Whitcup. Well, throwing you, coaches. Oh, so we have Coach Miller. Oh, okay. And uh, there's another guy who I didn't quite get to meet just because oh. I hurt my shoulder right before track season got to start. But, uh, yeah, they're doing really good over there. Good. That's exciting. Yep. We're excited to see how track plays out. And, again, they're in Fargo Fargo this weekend. Yep. Awesome. Um, let's see. Oh, Bikeathon. We have the Bikeathon still coming up. Um, really exciting. You know, it's, it's coming up fast, though. The deadline for that is February 21st, and then February 29th is the actual event. So if you need to get a hold of anyone, it's going to be Seth Moorkirky. We all know Seth, so shoot him an email if you need anything, or even a text. Plus, I heard a little birdie told me that if you participate, you're going to get some free food sponsored by Qdoba. Oh, and again, what the um, theme of that is 1980s. 80s wrestlers, which is so cool. I'm so excited to go and watch. It's going to be awesome. Are you going to get... Um, the Hulk stash? Yeah. I might get a Hulk mania uh, kind of tank top. You never know. Yeah. You well, know? we have a really exciting weekend coming... Yes coming ahead of us and tons of Blue Hawk sports. So it'll be fun. And our second ever Blue Hawk game day. And we'd like to thank our sponsors, the Movable Ministries, the DSU Heritage Foundation for all of this, putting it on. Super, super excited. Uh, and I think with that, Hawks are up. <laughs>